Okay, with this problem, we're uh, given some information about a bond, and we're asked to figure out the uh, bond issue price. Uh, use, you know, what's the present value of the bond? Okay, so in order to do that, you know, the bond has two cash flow streams. It has the um, interest payment, and it has the um, uh, principal payment. And so what we'll do is then take the present value of these payments to, de to determine the price of the bond. So the interest payment. Well, the bond is a $65,000 bond. It pays a rate of 7% of year, and it's going to do it for five years. But the bond pays interest semi-annually. So when it's semi-annually, what we want to do is, you know, we don't, we're, not in, we're not looking at what, how much interest is it going to pay yearly. We want to know what's it going to do each time it pays a, a makes a payment. And so, um, the way I think of that is right. We half the rate and double the number of periods. So the seven percent stated rate becomes three and a half percent, and it's going to be three and a half percent for ten times. So um, sixty-five thousand times three and a half percent is two thousand two seventy-five. Uh, each time the bond, each time the company makes a bond interest payment, the total amount is going to be two thousand two hundred and seventy-five. Of course, the principal that it's going to pay is, at, when the bond matures is sixty-five thousand. So now we need to go and find the present value factors um, to help us determine the present value. And I was just about to do that, and <laughs> then I remembered well we also need to discuss the market rate. So. Um, uh, so by the way, the stated rate, we're done with the stated rate. All we use the stated rate for is to figure out what is the interest payment to the bondholder. Everything else as it relates to bond relates to the market rate. And we're going to do the same thing with the market rate that we did here, right? It's not, we don't care about the annual market rate, we care about the semi-annual market rate. So 4%. So when we go to the tables, we're looking at 4% for 10 periods instead of 8% for five periods. Okay, so we're looking at the interest payment, and the interest payment is an annuity, meaning we're gonna make that same payment over and over. In fact, we're gonna do it 10 times. So that's what an annuity is. It's a regular, regular stream of uh, cash flows. So I go to the column 4%, I go down to 10, and I come up with uh, 8.111. And that is the present value factor for the um, interest payment. So I take uh, 8.111 uh, times the 2,275, and I get 18,000, um, uh, let's say 453 rounded. 18,453. That's the present value of all of those interest payments we're going to make. Now, let's take a look at the principal. And again, we're going to do the same thing, 4% for 10 periods. In this case, because the interest payment is made just one time, it is a single payment, then the table we use is the present value of a dollar, or sometimes it's called the present value of a single sum. Uh, in this case, again, 4% for 10 periods, and we get 0.6. Seven, six. So that's the present value factor that we'll use. So I put in point six seven six. I multiply that by sixty five thousand, and I get forty three thousand nine forty. I add the two together, eighteen thousand five fifty three, plus the forty three thousand nine forty, and I get sixty two uh, three. 93. And that's the issue price of the bond. I scan my list here, and A is the correct answer.